How's it going, everybody? Hoodlumut back with some more Steins Gate. And, uh, John Titter said that he wants us to be the Messiah. And I, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, we no longer trust him. We no longer want to follow him. At least I don't. I don't know about Okabe. I don't know what he'll do. But, uh, I do not trust John Titter any longer because of the stuff he is saying. I think he's just trying to use us and our uh, supposed abilities to uh, observe convergence. But without further ado, let's uh, jump back into this, shall we? Messiah. Noun. Number one, in Christianity, a title for Jesus Christ. Number two, one who brings salvation to mankind. Savior. Number three, one who rescues others from peril. Salvation. Noun. Number one, deliverance from pain and suffering. From Kojian Dictionary. I think that's how you say that. John Titter is a fraud! Okay, so he feels the same way. See? Okay, okay. I scream at the absurdity. Oh, here's Daru. Okay. Okay, we must have jumped in time a little bit here, just like when Daru got back or whatever. Daru and Kiritsu give me exasperated stares, but I ignore them. Me? The Messiah? Huh. <laughs> Ludicrous! To think that I would save humanity. I am no messiah. I am the insane mad scientist, Haowen Kiyoma, who, who has walked through fire and bathed in an ocean of blood to escape the clutches of the organization. My desire is chaos unending. Do you think that destroying the system will bring peace to the world? The answer is no. No, I say! Death to the naive fools who believe such lies. The collapse of authority means that lawless chaos shall reign. <laughs> um, Makaseishi? What the heck happened to Okarin? Beats me. A few hours ago, he was exchanging emails with John Titter, and then he suddenly got quiet. Oh, he never told her yet. Okay. Oh, Mayuri. Okay. Mayushi won a magazine sweepstakes once. Amazing, huh? You know the hero of Gunbum? <laughs> Gunbam? <laughs> uh, Setsuri? I won an autograph from his voice actor. That's fun. Be nice to her. I never knew Mayuri was a voice actor otaku. <laughs> okay, that's just kind of funny. Uh, magazine. You're still reading... Uh, anime magazines? You're a true otaku. Oh, it's, it's, it's kind of on the same level. Setsuri, is he from the latest Gunbam? I haven't seen it. The original is the best anyway. No. Let's do... Uh... Let's do this one. That one's the nicest, I think. It's just him kind of having a little fun, you know? All right. I think that's the game for me. The game is like, it's like, there's there's like half the game for me is figuring out this time travel thing. The other half of the game is just being nice to me, Eddie. Like, that's it. I just want to be nice to her. Just, just want to be nice to me, Eddie. That's it. All right. Here we go. <laughs> and then he started ranting. He's been like this for half an hour. He's been acting strange all day, don't you think? Agreed. Listen up, lab mems. It's time to resume Operation Erd. Seriously? The manager's still downstairs, you know. Fret not. It's almost closing time for the Brawn Tube Workshop. The phone wave doesn't work at night, remember? It's worth a try! We need to figure out how late the phone wave name subject to change works. I don't know. 
I, I don't think he actually thinks this is absurd, right? Because he, he was making a joke out of it. I think he actually is excited. And that scares me. I don't know. I don't know what to think anymore. Okay. At the same time, I want to see if the two of you can use D-mails to change the past. I, I also think that he, again, uses his chinibio miss to, to, like, as a defense mechanism. So that could also be part of it as well. He could actually be scared and just be doing that to, like, calm himself down. Change the past? <laughs> I still don't believe in the many worlds interpretation or Titter's attractor field theory. Actually, I'm starting to doubt them more and more. Okay. Okay. This is his inner thoughts. This has got to be... I think he's okay. I think he's on the right track. If we want to know how the world works... We'll have to figure it out ourselves. Yes. Don't trust people blindly. Yes. Yes. Okay. And to do that, we need to experiment. One thing I'm sure of is that the mass uh, disappearance in Akaba is related to D-mails somehow. As is the strange disconnect between my memories and everyone else's. According to Titter, I have a supernatural power... The one I call Reading Steiner. My doubts about Titter's uh, veracity aside, I do need to determine if I am indeed the only person who keeps his memories when the past changes. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Alright, alright, yeah, yeah, test yourself, do that. Change the past to your liking, as long as it's something easy to observe. Preparations for the phone wave name subject to change are complete. Daru's eyes wander to the ceiling in thought. Next to him, Kiritsu shrugs her shoulders and starts gathering her things. I'm going back to my hotel. Show me your report on today's experiment tomorrow. Hold it! When I grab her by the shoulder, Kiritsu nearly topples over. Hey, what's your problem? Who's writing that report? You, of course. This is your operation. And if we could get a report from the subject, too, that would be even better. Kiritsu glances at Daru. Are you not interested in changing the past? What happened to your eagerness to experiment? Did you forget what I said this afternoon? I'm against it. But you were so enthusiastic when we began the experiments. You went along without a single complaint. In your dreams, maybe. Did that change her? When we changed the past, did it also, like, mess with... Huh. I twist my lips into a grin. You're not being objective, Christy. Celeb Sev. <laughs> if you're going to correct yourself, at least get it right. <laughs> We've already performed one experiment. I changed the past. Hey, no fair. Ah, but you were. Uh, you were in on it too. But when the past changed. You forgot that I, uh, that it ever happened. Are you talking about this afternoon? I mean, when you suddenly started talking about the Lotto 6? Exactly. I explained what happened earlier this afternoon. You're not joking, are you? I'm serious. Seriously? One good look at my face, and Daru seems to understand I'm not joking. Kiritsu, on the other hand, has a sour look, but she's always like that. <laughs> Why did everyone else lose their memories? Actually, did everyone else lose their memories? In order to find out, I need them to perform the same experiment. Okay, there's one thing about the past I definitely want to change. Daru is quick to adapt, as always. 
we've known each other for a long time. He trusts me implicitly. Or maybe he's just being faithful to his desires. <laughs> what? Are you going to tell yourself to go on a diet? <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! Dude! The savage! Somebody get the fire extinguisher, dude! Gotta put this man out! <laughs> oh my gosh, why? That's so mean. <laughs> I wouldn't diet even if future me told me to. <laughs> Daru tells me he wants to change the events of the Faris Cup held at May Queen plus Nyan to the second power a few days ago. On that day, Daru got insta-killed by Faris in the Rynet Access Battlers match. <laughs> of course, he wants to act like he's cool. You're gonna change the result? I remember every move Faris Tan made. It'll be easy to take her from behind. Aren't I a genius? Okay. <clears throat> Alright, we're fine. We're over it. Hmm. Faris is probably too good for that to work. She'll just counter his counter strategy. Whatever. Daru, prepare the D-mail. Heck yeah! I'll give it my best shot. Daru hunches over and starts typing out the mail, leaving me to interp uh, input the forwarding address into the phone wave name subject to change. Gotta give this thing a, a real name. <laughs> I sit in front of the X68000 and take a look at my watch. It's 6.55 PM. No way to know if the phone wave name subject to change will operate at this hour. We haven't figured out the exact window yet. So why do you think you're the only one who remembers? You're awfully persistent. I see why they call you the zombie. <laughs> they. I don't follow. Zombies never stop coming. They're persistent. Cut the jokes. I'm serious here. Kiritsu's glare is scarier than usual. I might have wet myself a little there. <laughs> I think that the key is who receives the D-mail. Yeah, okay. See, I was kind of thinking the same thing. Him and I are on the same page, for, for real, because I was thinking that too. I was like, he was the one that received it, so I wonder if, if that's why his memories stayed the same. This is going to be interesting. Oh, bro, okay, I'm kind of foreseeing the future. Someone's going to be like, oh, no, everything's like, ah, blah, 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 or whatever. Anyway, only the recipient himself is able to retain his memories. That would be my guess. Hmm. Actually, that hypothesis doesn't explain the mass disappearance in Akihabara. Of course... I still don't have concrete proof that the mass disappearance incident was related to D-mail. We'll never know unless we experiment. After Daru, you'll send the next D-mail. Think about what you want to write. No. Kiritsu replies emphatically. I'm not sending one. Scared? That's not it. Then, are you worried about time paradoxes? Well, there's that, but it's more like a personal policy. She doesn't want to change time in any way, shape, or form, right? Because of her dad or whatever? A policy? Changing the past feels like cheating. Oh, yeah, there you go. I may only have 18 years of life experience, but I don't want to change any of those memories. I see. You're perfect now, so you don't want to change. <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> I don't want to deny who I've been. Because even my failures are a part of who I am today. Even if we solved all of the phone wave name subject to change as problems, you wouldn't use it? Even if John Titter said you could use his time machine to travel to whatever time you wish, you wouldn't use it? 
Even if a blue robot cat from the future were to jump out of your desk and give you a doorway to everywhere, you wouldn't use it. Kiritsu nods firmly. I wouldn't. But you love experiments, don't you? Is something wrong with that? <laughs> so basically, you like to experiment on other people while you watch and cackle at the results. You truly are a mad scientist. Why you... <laughs> oh, okay. Done. Oh, I thought he was going to protect her. <laughs> Kiritsu stalks towards me but is pushed aside by Daru who pres uh, presents his phone with a triumphant grin. I take a look. At Forest Cup, enemy setup, VLVVLVLL. -L -L. I don't get it. Me neither. <laughs> it's how Forestan placed her cards. Can't you tell? You guys are lame. Well, whatever. Preparations are complete. If this works, the mail will arrive at Daru's phone 52 hours ago. The discharge phenomenon occurs nor normally. I close my eyes to shield them from the lighting and spark. Oh. I close my eyes to shield them from the lightning and sparks. The D-mail was sent. Daru should have received it two days ago. However, why do I remember? Oh, okay, okay. So maybe he does have this superpower. Oh shoot, when I sent the D-mail earlier this afternoon, everyone else forgot all about it. If Daru's D-mail changed the past, then the present should have changed too. Daru should be the only one who remembers that he sent a D-mail. So now we're gonna find out, does he remember? Did the past change? Oh crap. Oh crap. <laughs> it is just Okabe. Daru looks around in confusion. Wait, Daru, you remember too? Huh? Remember what? That you just sent a D-mail. Daru nods. Oh no, he does! Oh! Oh shoot! Then I turn to Kiritsu. She answers before I ask. Of course I remember. What are you? Oh, I see. According to your hypothesis, you and I shouldn't remember sending the D-mail. Yeah, what the heck? What? Uh, now I'm, now I'm, I've just, everything's thrown out the window, what the heck? Daru, did you beat Faris in the Faris Cup? I don't know. <laughs> you said the winner gets Faris' home cooking, right? Did you eat it? What happened? He doesn't remember. Lukako. Mayuri chan's obsessed with the anime, this anime called Rainet. So I rented it to see what it was about. I don't usually watch anime. And when I do, I prefer romance. But I found this anime to be pretty deep, even though it's aimed at children. <laughs> I was surprised. P.S. I was so engrossed in Rainette, I couldn't do any practice swings with Samadare. I'm sorry. I think he just doesn't want to do it. <laughs> I prefer... Well, we gotta see what this says. Uh, oh, it says attachment sweat. Oh! Uh. Huh! What the frick? What is this? Hello? Completely engrossed by their discussion, Karari and Tamanu raise their voices. Oh, okay. On to the future Rynet formation. Okay. Oh, oh boy. Oh, man. I about, had a, I, oh, I about had a heart attack. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Just what sort of person is Kakaru? Kakaru is actually a warrior who protects the order of the internet. A net guardian. Uh, Karari and Tamaru wanted to tell their friends how cool that was, but Kakeru for forbade them 
uh, due to the risk that he may have to fight with the culprit. At that time, they receive news that the mystery hacker, Beesman, has attacked an online game server. Kakaru immediately challenges him using Nageya-san's newly made Rynet card and the unique browser Alpha Gaze. This is basically like Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Um, the first use of a new Rynet card. Despite his lack of experience, Kakaru successfully casts his boot spell. But just when Kakaru thinks he has easily won against the Cracker, Beesman, uh, who has complete control of the game server, overwrites the game system, sealing Kakaru deep within the game's loop dungeon. <laughs> he banished him to the Shadow Realm. Uh, Kakaru is in danger. At that moment, somehow Kirarai and Tamaru uh, also serve... Wait a minute. Sorry, I just thought of something I'll talk about in a second. Also, server dive. They came to save Kakadu. Uh, furthermore, these two are well versed in this game. As game players, they couldn't forgive the hacker who had taken over the server and toyed with the game players, so they decided to join forces with Kakadu. With their magnificent assistance and Kakadu's shoot ability, they successfully defeat Bee's Man. And when they do, suddenly an unknown chat window opens on their monitor. It's a signal from the Tokyo uh, Metropolitan Police Department. By any chance, are they here to praise us? They think in delight, but the police turn to them and say, you're under arrest. Got another conspiracy theory. What if they changed... They're, they're slowly changing the, divi the divergence, right? Or, or whatever. Um... I'm noticing these names share slight similarities with people that we know. Kakeru, what if that's Kiritsu? Tamaru, what if that's Daru? That one's that one's a little bit more vague, but uh, Kerari, what if that's Meyuri? And what if Bee's man is us? What if it's Okabe? Oh, bro. Oh, bro, I don't know about that one. I don't know if that's... But I feel like this is maybe like a like a foretelling of the future or something. Shoot ability, like maybe Kiritsu gets a shoot ability. Ah, man. I, I mean, we're pretty sure she kind of turns somewhat evil or something because of how Suzaha is, so... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's your problem right there. You can't waste your time with romance fluff if you have that much free time then practice with samadare <laughs> right now wait a minute does this one have a different one no it's the same thing okay okay now you're hooked on rynet everyone around me is buying into this rynet craze how can it be so popular don't tell me it's an organization plot i'm gonna go with this one because i think it's funnier <laughs> <laughs> Do your practice swings. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, back to the real thing at hand. Uh, yeah. I don't know. This sucks. I checked Daru's send history. As expected, the email he just sent isn't there. I do, however, find the D-mail in his, in his inbox. He received it two days ago, just like we wanted. This is the same thing that happened when I sent my D-mail, but then it disappeared, right? Or, or no, he was saying it dis- anyway, okay, no, I think it ha happened, right? Maybe the past hasn't changed? I'll try calling Mayushi. Oh, this is blowing my mind. He's the one who changed the past, yet he doesn't remember what happened after the change? That's odd. Meyushi, you're still at work, right? Is Faristan there? She is? Um, can you ask her if I beat her in the Faris Cup? Did I get to eat her home cooking? 
Who lost? I did? Oh. Barely took five seconds? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Daru's shoulders droop as he hangs up the phone. So it he must not have listened? Is that what happened? But he doesn't know if he rem he doesn't remember it, so he's like, I don't know. That's weird! Oh, that's weird. Okay. I guess that means the past hasn't changed. Why? It changed for Okarin, right? Maybe your foolproof plan wasn't so foolproof. Like, maybe it only gave you a slight advantage. I had the same thought. Faris is supposedly a world-class player. Daru's time travel cheat may not have been enough. Since Faris-san uh, defeated you anyway, the past didn't change. Interesting! Yeah, but I mean, the game would have played out d differently. That might not be enough to cause world, uh, world line divergence. Like Okabe said, you need to make a change that's easier to observe, or else there's no point to this experiment. Um, n not that I approve of this experiment or anything. <laughs> no, it's not over yet. I can still fight. Daru starts typing another mail. <laughs> One more time. I'll try sending my past self some more advice. This time... Something that'll ensure my victory. You really want to win that badly? More like he wants to eat Fadis' home cooking that badly. <laughs> That's my final answer. <laughs> oh boy, I don't like doing this so much, it's scaring me. Daru writes another D-mail. I don't bother checking what it says. I won't understand anyway. What do you mean? What do you mean? No, you check it so that you know if it changed. What are you saying? Why are you dumb when it... Why are you dumb when things could go wrong? There's so many times he's so smart. That's why I get frustrated. Because he actually he's actually like really smart sometimes. And then there's other times where he just... Oh, we'll just let this person know that we have a time machine. And just come and uh, take a look at it. Because she's been wanting to find it. And then this, he like won't check the dumb thing. Like, what? what is this? We activate the phone wave name subject to change and send the mail through. Just like before. Ugh. <laughs> oh? Nothing happens. No discharge. What? Usually it happens 10 to 20 seconds after pushing the start button. The timer counts down to zero without incident. That's scary. Out of time? Looks like it. But my advice was perfect. There's nothing we can do about it. We'll postpone the experiment till tomorrow. I check the clock. It's just past 7 p.m. Looks like that's the cutoff. After I left yesterday, I was thinking, how exactly does the phone wave make time travel possible? It works like the LHC. Didn't you say the LH LHC was like a giant microwave? If every microwave could turn into an uh, the LHC, then Japan would have black holes popping up everywhere. Whoa, that sounds worse than earthquakes. Well, no, because ours goes like in reverse, right? Like we we engineered it to go in reverse. We didn't we didn't like it, it didn't just do that naturally, right? That's the difference. I know it looks like CERN is able to create Kerr black holes willy-nilly, but that's not supposed to be possible. You can't just press a button and make a black hole. Even if you could, the risks would be unthinkable. It's ridiculous to suggest that a household microwave could generate a black hole. Titter's time machine is small enough to fit inside a car, and it makes black holes. 
Well, that's what he said, at least. Yeah, we can't trust him anymore. Now that I'm a little skeptical of Titter, I don't think... I don't feel like bringing it up. My point is that there has to be something else going on here. Some outside source must be injecting electrons into this microwave. An outside source of electrons? What could that be? Well, I'm going back to my hotel. I've had enough of this filthy man cave. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Don't forget to write that report. Kiritsu flings off her lab coat and hurries out the door. Did I miss something? Hold on. Okay, no. I just... Okay, I just wanted to make sure. She was serious about that report? Hmm. Maka says she's lab coat. I wonder what it smells like. Dude, stop! <laughs> I want to tell you again. As Daughter reaches for the lab coat and smells Kiritsu's uh, lingering fragrance, I grab him by the neck and pull down hard. Good. Thank you. Cut that out! If you have time to be uh, uh, perverted, then go think about how to change the past for tomorrow's experiment. <laughs> there wasn't anything to do after Kiritsu left. I tried operating the phone wave name subject to change a couple more times before I went to sleep, but the discharge phenomenon simply would not occur. I wonder if it needs a, a form of power. Maybe there was, like, uh, electrons, because she said injecting electrons, right? What if there was something that, like, had electrons and we were using it up, and, uh, and now we've used it all up and it no longer works? I wonder if that's something. Because we used it, what, two times? I think? No, we used it once. And it worked. No, because he no, because Dardo did get his, so we used it twice. Okay, so two times, whatever the thing is, remember that. Now it's the next morning, and I'm sitting on the bench in front of the Braun Tube workshop. It's still early, but it's already blazing hot. It's as if I'm baking in the sun. Sweat is dripping off my chin. We're supposed to be experimenting today, but not a single lab mem has arrived yet. After waiting impatiently for a while, the first person I see is... Was it Mr. Braun? Yeah, baby, on his moped. Okabe! Don't you have anything better to do? Good morning, Mr. O Okarin. Uh, the Tenoji pair come riding in on a moped. How many times do I have to tell you? Call me Kiyoma! Um, what should I do, Daddy? What nonsense are you trying to feed my daughter? Have you not properly educated her, Mr. Braun? This child of yours refuses to call me by my true name. Please do something about it. <laughs> Who cares? Don't be so picky. Nay, you don't have to listen to what this guy says, okay? Okay. <laughs> the manager parks his moped and quickly enters the store. Sister Braun... Uh, Sister Braun's about to follow him when... She turns her attention toward the end of the street and instantly brightens up. I follow her gaze and see Mayuri walking this way. Mayuri just... Everyone loves Mayuri. Who couldn't love Mayuri? Everyone loves Mayuri. She's the best. Good morning, Okarin. Mayuri! Nay runs up to Mayuri with a happy smile. Oh, hold up. Let's take a listen here. Oh, assistant... Have you written that report yet? Uh, for your information, I wasn't joking yesterday. If you blow this off, then you have no right to call yourself a scientist. Maybe this is too much for a freshman like you to understand, but writing papers is part of being a scientist. Hold on. Let's see. 
Let lesser men worry about such things. I have inventions to build and discoveries to make. A uh, scientist. I am not a mere scientist. I am an insane man scientist. He doesn't have very good comebacks for it. If you're so confident in your superiority, then show me your power. <laughs> I want that one because it'll <laughs> it'll provoke her. <laughs> I like it. Okay. And without breaking stride, she jumps into Mayuri's chest. Good morning, Nei-chan. Good morning. They get along so well that you'd think they were sisters. Mayuri has the ability to get along with anyone, so it's no surprise. Nei avoids me and Daru, but she adores Mayuri, and always goes for a flying hug whenever she gets the, uh, a chance. Daru sometimes complains about that. D that... Oh my gosh, I don't like that. <sighs> Daru... Oh... What a lucky girl. I wish I could jump into Mayushi's chest like that. Come on, man. Dude. Stop. Please. I'm begging you. I can't do that anymore, dude. No, wait. Maybe it would be better to have Natan jump into my chest. I... No, no, nope, 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 nope. His internal debate went on for hours. Nope, 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 nope. And this is for you, Nei-chan. Enjoy! Mayuri takes some candy out of her convenience store bag and gives it to Nei. Thank you! I have some for Okarin, too. She offers me some. Which I silently accept. Why are you sitting out here? I'm waiting for all lab mems to assemble. Um, are you slacking off? <sighs> Why, you chipmunk? Do you have to be so blunt? One of these days, I'll teach you to respect me. Um, Nei-chan? I'm sure Okarin's thinking about important stuff. I love her. She always sticks up for us. She's always nice to us. Uh, uh, uh. I can't help it, dude. So much love in my heart. She's just so precious. Oh, wow. Good job, Mayuri. <laughs> Okarin, Okarin. It's too early to make phone wave Chan sparkle, right? Can I go nuke some yakisoba bread? We removed the door. You can't heat food in it anymore. Oh, right. That makes me sad. Oh, no! By the way, have you had breakfast? Nope. Then let's eat together. We can eat the yakisoba bread cold. And then heat up some canned ramen in hot water. Wanna join us, Nei-chan? I'm okay. I ate. Okay. Nei waves, then heads back inside the Brawn Tube workshop. Lured by the prospect of canned ramen, I go inside the lab with Mayuri. The stagnant air makes the room hotter than outside. It doesn't improve much even after we open the window and turn on, a, on the fan. Daru-kun and Chris-chan are kinda late, huh? Indeed. Their lack of dedication is appalling. <laughs> Just then, the sound of a breaking bicycle comes from downstairs. That loud? Gosh. When I look out the window, I see part-time warrior arriving. She immediately notices me, looks up, and waves. Sup? Da -da -da! Suzu san If it isn't Sheena Mayuri! Da -da -da! They seem to have hit it off. 
like I said, Mayuri gets along with everyone. Okabe Rintaro, did you talk to Titter? Maybe. <laughs> I thought I dodged the question, but part-time uh, part warrior is persistent. Come on! You emailed him, didn't you? Yes, but I'm starting to doubt whether he can be trusted. What? Why? What went wrong? Why is she so flustered? It's, that's very interesting. What if she's a spy? Oh, dude, what if she's a spy from the future with John Titter, dude? Oh, dude, she's part of John Titter's organization, brother. Oh, no. Oh, no. Dude. Dude, I'm calling it right now. I'm calling that crap right now. Oh, so you're a Titter otaku. I guess there's an otaku for everything. Look, it's Chris-chan. Mayuri leans out the window to wave her hand. Kiritsu is walking towards the lab. That reminds me. Doesn't part-time warrior have something against Kiritsu? Oh, shoot. Yeah, you're right. Uh-oh. I wasn't thinking about that. I look at Suzaha. Her expression has changed dramatically. Now she's staring at Kiritsu in complete silence. She doesn't move a muscle. It's like she's trying to start a fight with her glare. Kiritsu's pretty stubborn too, so she meets Suzaha's glare for glare. Uh, she meets Suzaha glare for glare. The two of them exchange a word or two in front of the building. For a second, I'm worried that they might start throwing punches, but that doesn't happen. Chris-chan! <laughs> Good morning. What did you say to the part-timer downstairs? Kiritsu shrugs her shoulders. Nothing much. I told her if she wanted to say something, she should just say it. I don't think that's nothing. She's lucky that didn't lead to blows. What did she say? Nothing. She just groaned. I wonder what's wrong with her. <laughs> Why? You're making me mad, dude. She's jealous of Makase She's popularity. Duh. Daru bursts into the lab. She's thinking, if only I joined the lab instead of her, then I would be having fun with everyone right now. I'm so jealous. Or something like that. I'm telling you, man. 3D sucks. If she wants my lab mem number, she can have it. What? The lab mem number you carry is the highest credential a scientist could hope to achieve. They sell for millions on the black market. But you would give it away? It's not exactly a counterfeit passport. Also, shut up. <laughs> Mayushi wants everyone to get along. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really care about their little quarrel anyway. Only one thing interests me now. The mystery of D-Mail. Oh! We begin experimenting immediately. Even though it's still morning, the electrical discharge occurs on demand. Okay, okay. Why? Why? I need... I need answers? Things look favorable today. That reminds me, we haven't talked to Mr. Braun yet. Maybe we should come up with an excuse first. To be honest though, I don't care what he thinks. For we are at war. War against the organization and CERN. The dark powers that rule the world from the shadows. Anzai Sensei, I want to eat Faris Tan's home cooking. If you give up, it's game over! Unfortunately, Daru's second email fails to change the past. I get the feeling Rynet matches are difficult to cheat your way out of, uh, out of like this. 
not to mention we're limited to 36 bytes of text. Looks like we have to give up on Daru. He's gone to... He's gone to drown his sorrows in the internet. Okay, that's just a weird sentence I was going to say. Alright, so who do we experiment on? From the look on Kiritsu's face, I don't think she's willing to change her policy. Don't you do it! Don't you do it! Don't you dare! Don't! No! That leaves only one candidate. No! Mayuri? It's time for you to change the past. Don't do it, dude! If something bad happens to her, I won't forgive you. I will not forgive you if something bad happens to Mayuri. I promise you. I, you're, you'll become my least favorite character in this entire game. I don't give a crap. Dude, if you freaking screw up Mayuri, I'm gonna cry. Eh? Me? Are you sure? But, um... What should I change? Miri looks stumped as she slurps her canned ramen. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. This is, uh, Mi Miri's way more important. Uh, 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 Akihabara's such a strange town. Everywhere I look, I see drawings of cute girls. Uh, some of the some of them even have their breasts fully exposed, which uh, startled me. Coming here has been a real culture shock. It's amazing how peaceful Japan is now. Um, unfortunately, Moe has become the symbol of Akihabara and the chaos that rules here. Get used to it. <laughs> uh, culture shock. Uh, I can imagine how that would shock someone who isn't prepared. Uh, peaceful. I agree. It's all because of the organization's efforts to stupefy Japan. Let's try this one. Yeah, we're just going to go with <laughs> serious, I think. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, I know. Uh, I'll make Luka-kun wear one of my costumes. How? By sending Luka-kun a mail. <laughs> I don't think a simple request is going to change the past. Can't you think of anything easier to change and observe? Hmm. She slurps more ramen. <laughs> Let's use that canned ramen. Looks like I'm the only one with ideas. You'll send a email to yourself one hour ago. Type... I want to eat canned Odin, or something like that. I don't think that's enough to convince her to... Oh, that might work! <laughs> uh? When I went to the vending machine today, I spent 10 minutes wondering if I should get canned Odin or canned ramen. It was really hard. So a little push should be enough to make you choose canned Odin. All right, let's go with that. But that's not going to, like, change the world, right? Like, okay, we went from, like, getting a lottery ticket and winning, like, a ton of money type of stuff to, 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 to going to, like, just simple things. Like, do I choose, like, red or blue? Like, it's, like, it's not, like, it's a food item. I don't think that's going to actually change anything. Okay. But before we change the past, I gotta finish this ramen first. <laughs> May he start shoveling the ramen into her mouth. What happens if you don't finish it? It'll go to waste. Oh, of course. <laughs> Kiritsu clearly doesn't know what to say. <laughs> May he really is a ditz. I'm used to it by now, of course. Don't say that about her. Don't say that about her. You're gonna hurt her, and I'm gonna cry. I don't like this, dude. I don't like this plan. Test yourself again, bro. Uh, I get the phone wave name subject to change prepped for D-mail. 
content of Mayuri's mail is simple enough. See, they, they spent so long getting us to like her. I just know something bad's gonna happen because they want us to cry, dude. They, they're evil. They hate us. They're the organization. This whole, the people that made this game are the organization. They're the evil ones. They're certain. They changed the, the freaking future. They did. They went back in the past to make me hate my life. Ugh. I hate it. Canned Odin, piping hot and delicious. Well, that doesn't tell her to get it. You should have been, you should have said like, 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 you know, get the can Odin or something, right? Anyway, I just hope it actually works. We wait for Mayuri to finish eating her canned ramen, then activate the phone wave name subject to change. To send it one hour back, we input one. In other words, we set the microwave for only one second. I wonder if the discharge phenomenon will occur in such a short span of time. That's something else we'll learn from this experiment. Phone wave name subject to change. Activate. Oop. Aw, I haven't said it yet. There wasn't enough time to blink. So, one second isn't enough for the discharge to occur. That's what I expected, but it's good to have proof. What if you try warming it up beforehand? Warming it up? One second isn't enough, right? So just run the microwave for about 30 seconds without sending a mail. Ooh, that's kind of a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, alright. Okay, I like that. As soon as it's done, run it again with the timer set at one second. That should cause the discharge, right? Any basis for that? Nope. <laughs> but it's a good idea. I mean, I, it's worth a shot. Dang. Mayeri, got anything else? Um, well... We could change the flavor of rice ball I bought last night. Or you could just, like, resend it, right? You just do it again? It wasn't enough time, so... Ah, pff, whatever. Do you remember what kind of rice ball you ate last night? Smoked tuna. <laughs> <laughs> she remembers? Impressive. Yes, she is impressive. She's the best. So let's change that to, um, fish eggs. Maybe we should find another test subject. <laughs> Something is, yes, please, actually do. Please, that'd make me happy. Something is telling me we're going to have to look outside the lab. Okay, good. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Oh, oh, oh. Nothing bad happened. Okay, we're okay. I don't care now what happens. Anyone else can perish and suffer. I don't care. I go for a walk to clear my head. After lunch at King Burger, I grab a coffee at the Starbucks uh, on the first floor of Yodabashi. I left Mayuri and the others at the lab. I need some time to get my thoughts in order. I recall what happened when I set, uh, sent myself the Lotto 6 numbers. The moment I sent that D-mail, I felt a strong tremor, and then the world as I knew it changed slightly. The fact that I had sent a d-mail had been undone. I know that because it had disappeared from my send history. However, it was in my inbox. The mail had definitely reached the past. I have a feeling that they can't send any more at the current moment because uh, of something. Something ran out. Something ran out of, of electrons or something, something that's been putting that off and now it, it's not doing it enough to create a curved black hole or whatever is happening to make them be able to send the email through time. That's my guess. That's just very light theory I have right now. However, it was my inbox. Or, it was in my inbox. The mail had definitely reached the past. What does this mean? The mail was, the mail was received, but never sent. Isn't that a time paradox? Oh, that is true. It would be. Oh, well, no, because the world line divergence, right? So time paradoxes don't matter because of that. Is that the reason why everyone else lost their memories? 
Why did that happen? The butterfly effect? That's not an answer. Changing the past changed the world. Titter spoke of divergence. When divergence changes, are people's memories reconstructed to match the new world line? Then how come I remember the previous world line even after the past change or changes? Maybe it's because you actually do have powers of some kind. My deliberations are interrupted by an incoming mail. I don't have time for this. It's a mail, so I can just reply to it later. I concentrate on my coffee. However... Oh. All these mails. No doubt about it. It's gotta be Kiryu Moika, the mail demon known as Shining Finger. Can I just... Ch oh, I can't check it yet. How can she be so shy in real life and so persistent in email? There's something wrong with that woman. <laughs> I sigh and open my mail reluctantly. Favor, can I send a D-mail too, please, Moika? Well, at least we got a volunteer, right? There you go. There's our volunteer. Can I? Please reply, I'm a lab mem too, right? Pretty please. What? She wants to send a D-mail? That reminds me. Yesterday I made Moika lab mem number 005. That means she's qualified to participate in our experiments. Moika seems serious, so she might meet my demands. I still don't know. I don't know how I feel about her being part of the group, but whatever. Most importantly, all the other lab mems are completely useless when it comes to D-mails. I still haven't been able to verify whether or not I can keep my memories if someone else changes the past. But, wait. I'm worried. Moika works for an editorial company. In other words, she's related to the media. What if she sends a D-mail and leaks word of the time machine? Well, you just check what she's gonna send first, right? Like, right? We'd be flooded by press. Gone will be the days of lurking in the shadows. My location will be exposed to the organization. Of course, sooner or later, we're going to have to announce our findings to the world. But in that case, I'd rather choose a national newspaper or TV network to cover the event rather than some shady magazine. That way, I'll spread... It'll spread faster throughout Japan. Nay, the world. Either way, something tells me it's better not to go public through Moika. Is he just gonna deny her? I have a feeling that maybe because he doesn't trust her, like, we should trust her. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. They, they might be... Because I don't know if they're doing that thing where it's like, ah, these are our friends, and then they're gonna, like, betray us later. So, because we know there's something up with Kiritsu, so... I don't know. I got all these theories, and one of them's got to be right, right? So, I'll be right somehow. However, Moika is a lab mem. Yesterday, we told her everything about the phone wave name subject to change and D-mails. Moreover, we made her one of us. It was necessary to buy her silence. Realizing that I have no reason to deny Moika her request, I put my phone to my ear. Are you kidding me? Ah, Whatever. I mean, you could monitor, I guess, and see what she's sending and where she's sending it to, but ah, I don't... still don't know about this. It's me. Yeah. I have some doubts. What? You can tell by my voice? <laughs> you know me too well. So about whether or not... I should include Shining Finger in the phone wave name subject to change experiments. What? Nonsense. You want me to offer her as a sacrifice? True, I am prepared to make sacrifices in order to bring chaos to the world, but... No. There's no problem. I shouldn't have hesitated. Pathetic. 
Maybe I'm not cut out to be a mad scientist. Yeah. You might say her offer was a message. No. No doubt this too is the choice of Steinsgate. Elsai Kongru. It's decided. I type a reply to Moika's mail. She's going to do something that probably matters, and that's why it'll change. Indeed you are. Lab mem number 005. Shining finger. Report to the lab at once. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. After sending it off, I hurry back to the lab.